Westland, T.S. Eliot. One, the burial of the dead. April is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. Winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow, feeding little life with dried tubers. Summer surprised us, coming over the Starnberg, save with a shower of rain. We stopped in the colonnade and went on in sunlight into the loft garden and drank coffee and talked for an hour. Then gar kein Ruß in Stammers Lichtanek in Deutsch. Shortman singing the Archdukes, my cousins. He took me out on a sled and I was frightened and he said, Marie, Marie, hold on to me. And down we went. In the mountains, they feel free. I read much of the night and go south of it. What are these roots of crunch? What branches grow out of this stony rubbish? Son of man cannot say, or guess. If you know only a heap of broken images where the sun beats, the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, and the dry stone no sound of water. Only, no shadow under this red rock. Come in, under the shadow of this red rock, and I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you, or your shadow at evening rising to me. I'll show you fear. In a handful of dust. Frisch wird der Wind beheimat, so mein Irisch Kind. Wo weißt du? You gave me high since first year ago. You called me the Hyacinth Girl. Yet, coming back late from the Hyacinth Girl, your arms full and your hair wet. I could not speak. My eyes failed, and I was neither living nor dead. I knew nothing looking at the heart of light. The silence. Oh, du blödes mir. Madame Sussos Tris, famous clairvoyant, had a bad cold, nevertheless, is born to be the wisest woman in Europe with a wicked pack of cards. Said she, Is your card the drowned Phoenician sailor who is a pearl through his eyes? Here is Merodoc, the lady of the rose, the lady of situations. Here is a man with three stains, and here the woman, and here's the one had merchant on this card, which is blank. There's something he carries on his back which I am forbidden to see. I do not find the hanged man. Fear death by water. I see a crowd of people walking in a ring. Thank you. If you see, dear Mrs. Ectony, tell her I've been the horoscope myself. One must be so careful these days. Unreal City, under the brown fog of winter dawn. The crowd flowed over London Bridge. So many. I had not thought death had undone so many. His eyes shot and infrequent were exhaled, and each man fixed his eyes before his feet. He walked up the hill and down King William Street to where St Mary Bournemouth kept the hours with a dead sound on the final stroke of nine. There I saw one I knew and stopped him, crying, Stetson, you, who were with me in the ship soon my life. That corpse you planted last year in your garden. Has it begun to sprout? Will it bloom this year? Or has a sudden frost disturbed its bed? Ah, keep the dog far hence that's friend to men, or with his nails he'll dig it up again. You, hypocrite lecteur, mon semblable, mon frère. Two, the game of chess. The chair she sat in like a bird of the floor with a glass held up by stones wrought with fruited vines, from which a golden cube had all beat down. Another hid his eyes behind his wing. Double the flames of seven branched candelabra, reflecting light upon the tables and the three jewels rose to meet him. From satin cases poured in rich profusion, and vials of ivory and coloured glass unstopped and lurked in strange synthetic perfumes. Ungent, powdered, all liquid, troubled, confused and drowned the sense in odour stirred by the air that freshened from the window. These ascended, and fattened the prong of flames, flung their smoke into the aquaria, stirring the pattern of the coffered sea. Huge seawood, fed with cotton, burned green and orange, framed by the coloured storm, in which, sad light, a carved dolphin swam. Above the antique mantle was displayed as though a window gave upon the silken sea with a change of form by the barbarous king so rudely forced. Yet there the nightingale filled all the desert with inviolable voice. And still she cried, and still the world pursued, jug, jug, to dirty ears. 
and other withered stumps of time were tall upon the walls, staring forms leaned out, leaning, pushing the room enclosed. Footsteps shuffled on the stair, under the firelight, under the brush, her head spread out in fiery points, clawed into words, then would be savages still. My nerves are bad tonight, yes, bad. Stay with me. Speak to me, why do you ever speak? Speak, what are you thinking of? What thinking? What? I don't know what you're thinking. Think. I think we're in rat salad with the dead men lost their bones. What's that noise? The wind under the door. What's that noise now? What's the wind doing? Nothing. Again, nothing. Do you know nothing? Do you see nothing? Do you remember nothing? I remember those pearls with his eyes. Are you alive or not? Is there nothing in your head but oh, 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 that Shakespearean rag. It's so elegant. It's so intelligent. What shall I do now? What shall I do? I shall rush out as I am, walk the streets of my hair down so. What shall we do tomorrow? What shall we ever do? The hot water at ten, and if it rains, a closed car at four, and we shall play a game of chess, pressing lidless eyes and waiting for the knock upon the door. When Luke's husband got demobbed, I said, didn't mean small words, I said to her myself, Oh, please, it's time! Now, we all Albert's coming back, make yourself a bit smart. You want to know what you've done with that money you gave you to get yourself some teeth? He did, I was there. You have them all out, Lou. Get a nice set. He said, I swear I can't bear to look at yeah. you. No more can't I, I said. Think of poor Albert. He's been in the army four years. He wants a good time. If you don't give it him, then there's others will. Oh, is there? She said. Something like that, I said. I don't know who to thank. She said, give me a straight look. Hurry up, please. It's time. If you don't like it, you can get on with it. Others can pick and choose if you can't. But if Albert makes off, it's not for lack of telling. You ought to be ashamed of yourself looking so antique. And they're only 31. I can't help it, she said, pulling a long face. It's them pills I took to bring it off. She's had five and then he died to young George. The chemist said it'd be alright, but I've never been the same. Oh, you are a proper fool, I said. Well, I won't leave it up there, it is, I said. What you get married for if you don't want children? Hurry up, please, it's time! Well, last Sunday Albert was out, and he had not gammon, and he asked me in to dinner to get the beauty of it hot. Hurry up, please, it's time! Hurry up, please, it's time! Good night, Bill, good night, May, good night, Lou, good night, good night, ta ta, good night. Good night, ladies. Fire sermon. The river's tent is broken. The last fingers of leaf clutch and sink into the wet bank. The wind crosses the brown land unheard. The nymphs are departed. Sweet Thames, unsoftly to end my song. The river bears no empty bottles, sandwich papers, silk handkerchiefs, cardboard boxes, cigarette ends, or other testimony of summer nights. The nymphs are departed. And their friends, the loitering heirs of city directors, departed. I've left no addresses. By the waters of Lehman I sat down and wept. Sweet Thames, run softly to lend my song. Sweet Thames, run softly, for I speak not loud or long. But at my back, in an icy blast, I hear the rattle of the bones. And chuckles spread from ear to ear. A rat crept softly through the vegetation, dragging its slimy body on the bank while I was fishing in the dull canal on a winter evening round behind the gas house. Musing upon the king, my brother's wreck, and on the king, my father's death before him. White bodies naked on the low, damp ground, and bones cast into a little low, dry garret, rattled by the rat's foot only year to year. But at my back, from time to time, I hear the sound of horns and motors, which shall bring Sweeney to Mrs. Porter in the spring. Oh, the moon shone bright on Mrs. Porter and her daughter. They washed their feet in soda water. Hey, oh, ces voix d'enfant chantant dans le coupeau. Twit, twit, twit. Jug, 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 jug. So rudely forced. Terror. Unreal city. The brown fog of winter noon. 
Mr. Eugenides, the Smyrna merchant, unshaven with a pocket full of currants. CIF London, with documents outside. Asked me in demotic French to luncheon at the Cannon Street Hotel, followed by a weekend at the Metropole. At the Violet Tower, when the eyes and back turn upward from the desk, when the human engine waits like a taxi, throbbing, waiting. I, Tiresias, though blind, throbbing between two lives, old man with wrinkled female breasts can see, at the violet hour, the evening hour that strives homeward and brings a sailor home from sea, the typist home at tea time, clears her breakfast, lights her stove, and lays out food in tins. Out of the window, perilously spread, her drying combinations touched by the sun's last rays. On the divan are piled, at night her bed, stockings, slippers, camisoles and stairs. And I, Tiresias, old man with withered dugs, perceived the scene and fought to all the rest. And I too await the expected guest. He, the young man carbuncular, arrives. A small house agent's clerk with one bald stare. One of the low on whom assurance sits as a silk hat on a Bradford millionaire. The time is now propitious, as he guesses. The meal is ended, she is bored and tired. Endeavours to engage her in caresses, which still are unreproved, if undesired. Flushed and decided, he assaults at once. Exploring hands meet no defence. His vanity requires no response and makes a welcome of indifference. And I, Tiresias, have for suffered all enacted on this same divan or bed. I, who have sat by Thebes below the wall and walked among the lowest of the dead, bestows one last patronising kiss and gropes his way, finding the stairs unlit. She turns and looks a moment in the glass, hardly aware of her departed lover. Her brain allows one half-formed thought to pass. Well, now that's done. I'm glad it's over. When lovely woman stoops to folly and paces about her room again alone, she smooths her hair with automatic hand and puts a record on the gramophone. This music crept by me upon the water and along the strand, up Queen Victoria Street. Oh city, city, I sometimes hear beside a public bar in Upper Thames Street the pleasant whining of a mandolin and the clatter and chatter from within where fishermen lounge at noon and the walls of Magnus Mater hold inexplicable splendours of Ionian light and gold. The river sweats oil and tar the barges drift on the turning tide, red sail wide to leeward swings on the heavy spar. Barges wash, drifting logs, down Greenwich Reach past the Isle of Docks. We are la la li a, wa la la li a la la. Elizabeth and Lester beating oars, the stern was formed a gilded shell red and gold. The brisk swell rippled both shores. Southwest wind carried downstream the peal of bells. White towers. We are la la li a. Wa la la li a la la. Trams and dusty trees. Highbury bore me. Richmond and Kew wounded. By Richmond I raise my knees, supine on the floor of a narrow canoe. My feet are at Margate. My heart is under my feet. After the event, he wept, he promised a new start. I made no comment. What am I to resent? On Margate Sands, I can connect nothing with nothing. Broken fingernails of dirty hands. My people, humble people, expect nothing. La la. To Carthage, then I came. Burning, 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 burning. Oh Lord, thou pluckest me out. O oh Lord, thou pluckest me out, burning. Four, death by water. Phlebas a Phoenician, a fortnight dead, forgot the cry of goals, the deep sea swell, the profit and loss. A current under sea picked his bones in whispers. As he rose and fell, he passed the stages of his age and youth, entering the whirlpool. Gentile or Jew, O oh you who turn the wheel and look to windward, consider Phlebas. What the thunder said. After the torchlight, red on sweaty faces, 
after the frosty silence in the gardens, after the agony in stony places, the shouting and the crying, prison place and reverberation of thunder of spring over distant mountains. He who was living is now dead. We who were living are now dying with a little patience. Here is no water but only rock, rock and no water but sandy road. The road winding above among the mountains, which are mountains of rock without water. If there were water we should stop and drink. Amongst the rock one cannot stop or think. Sweat is dry, and feet are in the sand. If only there were water amongst a rock. Dead mountain mouth of carious teeth that cannot spit. Here one can neither stand nor lie nor sit. There's not even silence in the mountains. But dry sterile thunder without rain. There's not even solitude in the mountains. But red sullen faces sneer and snarl from doors of mud cracked houses. If only there were water. And no rock. If there were rock and also water, and water, a spring, a pool amongst a rock, if there were the sound of water on it, not the cicada and dry grass singing, but the sound of water over rock, where the hermit thrush sings in the pine trees, drip, drop, drip, drop, 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 drop. But there is no water. Who is the third who walks always beside you? When I count, there are only you and I together. But when I look ahead, up the white road, there's always another one walking beside me, gliding, wrapped in a brown mantle, hooded. I do not know whether a man or a woman, but who is that at the other side of you? What is that sound high in the air? A murmur of maternal lamentation. Who are those hooded hordes swarming over endless plains, stumbling in cracked earth, ringed by the flat horizon on city over the mountains, cracks and reforms and bursts into violet air, falling towers, Jerusalem, Athens, Alexandria, Vienna, London, unreal. A woman drew her long black hair out tight and fiddled whisper music on those strings, and bats with baby faces in the violet light whistled and beat their wings and crawled head downward down a blackened wall, upside down in air with towers. Tolling reminiscent bells kept the hours, and voices singing out of empty cisterns and exhausted wells. In this decayed hole among the mountains, in the faint moonlight, the grass is singing over tumbled graves about the chapel. Here is the empty chapel, only the wind's home. It has no windows and the door swings. Dry bones can do no harm. Only a cock stood on the roof tree. <coughs> In a flash of lightning, then a damp gust bringing rain, Ganga was sunk. And the limp leaves waited for rain while the black clouds gathered far distant over him. The jungle crouched, hunched in silence. Surrender which an age of brutes can be contracted by this, this only, we have existed, which is not to be found in our obituaries, or in memories draped by the beneficent spider, or under seals broken by the lean solicitor in our empty rooms. Da, diadem. I have heard the key turn in the door once and turn once only. We think of the key, each in his prison thinking of the key. Each confirms a prison, only at nightfall. Etherized rumour revives for a moment a broken corollaris. Da. Damyata. The boat responded gaily to hands skilled with sail and oar. The sea was calm. Your heart would respond gaily when invited, beating obedient to controlling hands. I, at least, set my lands in order. Land to bridges, falling down, falling down, falling down. Poi se scosi nel fuoco, che glafina quando fia mute che le donne. O 
swallow, swallow. The prince d'Aquitaine and Arthur Rabouli. These fragments oh, no, I have no. shored against my ruins.